The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. The vicarious offerings of Christ on the cross, for which He has made for us to be the righteousness of God, sharing the substitutory spiritual death, in order to make us to present beside Himself holy, blameless, and agnicators. By the right process of Morphe, in order to see his greatest labor, the labor to redeem us to be holy and blameless before the foundation of the world, he chooses for his glory. To such great Lord our God be the glory forever and forever. There is none who can enjoy the vicarious sufferings, neither they take. The religion-minded people come to teach why you are going to suffer for others. In fact, even indeed, the good man suffering for the evil is no way possible. Far less, an evil can suffer for his own sake. The men of this world in the religion dogmas teach who is going to die for the sins of others. If anyone has to be punished for other man's sin, they say they are so selfish they cannot even die. But Christ our Lord took this great vicarious sufferings for you and for me on the cross. That whosoever believes in him shall never perish, because he died for us a substitute of spiritual death. But you shall have the righteousness of God imputed to your credit, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Such great reformation movement brought for us on October 31st, 1517, and almost all 500 years in this year of October 31st. To understand the word of the Lord very clearly, very accurately, and come to know and apply the truth for our lives. In order to make known that though the 500 years have been happened, and if there were only 95 theses where Martin Luther went along to nail on the castle, today, on each and every Protestant church, there should be nailing of the entire Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, wherewith we have been told, for the sake of Christ our Lord, in Colossians 1-24, the sufferings that we have to go through. Our role, our part, our Lord, by daily feeding them, daily inculcating them, and not giving place to the adversary, Satan. So what our Lord our God prepared and kept for us in today's manna of spiritual realm, it is a must that every believer should know, as Numbers 10, 35 and 36 teaches to us, when they were going for the journey, they said, Lord, rise before us. And they said, Lord, settle down and return back to the myriads of Israel. Today, at every breath of our life, after believing in Christ, our Lord, our Savior, it is the teaching and the preaching and being edified in the Word of the Lord our God in the spiritual sense. Besides that, this greatest poltim of privileges of all time given to this church age, the good land, flowing with or gushing with the completed canon of Scripture and the permanence of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, those who are true believers in Christ, who believe by faith alone in Christ alone, and use rebound 1 John 1 9 in the privacy of their priesthood. Getting back in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 
And when Lord God, the Holy Spirit reveals to us the scriptures, then only we can understand under the shedding process of fortizo. If it is not fortizo, then we can never understand not even a single word. You can never understand that you are the holy of the holies. You can never understand you have been purchased with a great price and you need to look back and consider to glorify our Lord in this flesh. You will never understand the purpose for which you and I have been kept alive, though we have been not worthy for anything, even to think of and call our Lord of our Lord's name. Because without the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit you cannot even call him as Lord. And to have our fellowship and our joy to be fulfilled in Christ. We cannot deceive ourselves by telling that we are the lovers of truth and we are the children of light. And when we lie and we hate the truth by walking in lies and not able to tell the truth. And when you are staying in the darkness by not knowing the truth and ignoring the truth. Though the 500 years of greatest reformation which has been given to us and brought in our hands. We haven't even known the Bible to be absolutely learned and applied for our lives in the mystery realm. And known to be applied from the original language of the scriptures thoroughly being taught from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 and in fact indeed the entire counsel in all the instruction and in all the ways of him says Deuteronomy 11 21 so that to observe if we can observe our lives to love if we can love our Lord and to cleave unto him and to have that the back cleaving unto one becoming one flesh with Christ if we can do those things, all the ways, all the instructions given for us, then you will surely understand the whole, the world, world will hate you. Because you are not of this world. Christ our Lord has separated you, separated you from this world. If you were of the world, the world would have bought you to be the fond philos, the fond ones of them. And the fond ones of them, they are the traitors for Christ. The fond ones of this world, they are none, none other but these are the greatest black spots for the church age. These are the clouds without rains. These are the crowds of Kleptes, Lastes, Misthotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos, and Shuras oriented minded pastors who tell they are in light, who tell they are walking in truth. But in return they are lies and they are not walking in truth, they are in darkness. And those who say they are in darkness, they are deceiving themselves. Therefore, they don't have their own techno-oriented children. Therefore, we don't find them daily training up, as Acts chapter 20 teaches for us three years. Day and night, rigorously training them up into the entire counsel of the Lord our God, and furthermore, moving ahead from that place. So that he has to be pure from the account given to him, so that he cannot have the blood of them upon his head, but rather blow them up the teachings from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21, and then see that they have been prepared for the greatest missionaries and ambassadors for Christ. They are by default ambassadors, but we make them to be missionaries in Christ, knowing and learning the entire counsel of the Lord our God. What else can you do on this earth? No, you not, they gave their lives for us. And we are being stained with the innocent blood of them upon our hands. Who had their life, who had their meaningful purpose, who had everything, but yet their lives were being changed only for the glory of the Lord our God. They stood for truth. They stood as light. They were the salt. They never cared about even the lives, what they could be for them. What could, could be the result for them. They went along only the word of the Lord of our God to be honored above his name and they lived a life as such. But today we do have the completed can of scripture and how much we are really living our life. For what our life has been counted of. Or where is our life even to be taken the birth pangs of a woman so that Christ could be formed in you in a spiritual sense when Apostle Paul uses to the, Coron to the Galatians to tell to the converts of that only the one word which has been called as morphe so that it has been used for the artists who use the material to shape into an image likewise apostle paul quotes back in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 and tell i have been the wise master builder i have come here to make your foundation upon our my upon the lord and savior jesus christ and as such how we are going to construct your home 
Now I have the material and I want to produce an image in you. What is that image? The character of Christ. What is the material? The completed can of scripture and the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who permanently indwells in us. But whenever we sin, either by thought, word or deed, we lose the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And he's been grieved and squelched and lied. And how do we get back? By using rebound. 1 John 1 9. The privacy of your priesthood. If you're a believer and if you're an unbeliever, believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you can understand the spiritual phenomena. The vicarious sufferings none can take. Who can take the place of others so that you can die there instead of him? If anyone comes and tells to you in a judicial judgment, if it is been passed on, that you have to be hanged to death. If there is anyone who can come and tell to you, I will die in place of you, except your beloved ones. If there is an enemy for you, will he come? But rather in return, he will rejoice, saying that my enemy has been put to death. He has been hanged to death, doesn't it? We are the enemies of Christ before we could believe upon him. We have been aliens from the plan of Lord of a God. But yet Christ our Lord was been sent by God the Father so that he loves this world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that now we are no longer to be under the kingdom of darkness but being transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and that process is called as metaschematizoan process which we don't possess the kingdom of light but yet our Lord our God transferred us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light no matter however the earth may come to go and to see your metamorphome, metamorphome transformation but that metamorphome transformation is called as religion. They allow to do good deeds, they allow to do the virtue, they allow to do what is pure, what is just, what is honest, and they want to look what is in arity, and they want to look what is praise, and they want to look what are things they have been count worthy to be counted. And they want to live a true life. Being satisfied in their thoughts, being satisfied in their emotions, being satisfied in each and everything. But that doesn't give them Christ. But that doesn't give them eternal life. They have the beliefs that they have been saved, but it isn't. The imputed righteousness of Christ, the plus are the absolute standards of righteousness of Him. No man can work out. No man can boast. No man can achieve it. Because all that have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord of our God says the only Bible, the only revolution, the only name for us so that we can be saved, so that we can be learned, so that we can understand our life on this earth. And besides understanding when you have known Christ like Zacchaeus, we go along and tell to others. And if you don't have voice enough to tell, you tell by your lives. Not lest you be a kleptes or lestes and call yourself to be a pastor and beg money for your belly. And get the glory of Lord my Lord to shame just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley rather than giving it in grace, reflecting the love of Christ. Graciously. And the same thing what we look, the pastors come to tell following the trends of the other religion-oriented minds. And they come along to tell to you all in all the terms of their love and they teach to you to teach. Dear brethren, so sad it is for us to not. You should do these works, then only you will be saved. But the word of the Lord of our God says, Believe, not your works. Because Christ our Lord alone is the only one who had that absolute righteousness for us, given for us. Because everyone who has sinned and, shot and come short of the glory of the Lord our God. And when we go back and look in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, all the good deeds of this man are being counted as ministrous cloth. They are fit for nothing. What do you do about your ministrous cloth? You throw them out. You don't keep it for you to say that you are going to get rewards. What about the wood, the molten stone and the brass and the gold, what you make? They can speak to you. They have eyes, they can't see. They have ears, they can't hear. They have nose, but they can't smell. Do you not know what we were reading yesterday when Elijah came along to tell the first chance given to your enemy? For the 450 Baal prophets. And he started to mock them and criticize them. Think, see that your gods are sleeping. See that your gods are traveling. See that your gods are tired of hearing about you and they don't want to hear about your cry. Such are these molten images made by man, made by the hands of man, from wood. And when we read back in Isaiah chapter 44, the clear description, use the same tree for your food, for your shelter, for your clothing. And you prepare 
at all from that and you keep it as your God and you worship him how foolish is this man and yet they say we are worshiping our Lord who can give an image to the four-feeted to quadrupeds, to the bipeds to the Dagons and call them as gods and show them as gods my Lord our God has no image so that you can exchange that or so that he can require something of your help to make you so that the people can know that he is God what they are worshipping they are in return worshipping nature as God they are worshipping creation as God what creation they have made there is a greater creator and that creator is my Christ who made all things unto him who gave for us the vicarious suffering so that they can believe upon Christ they can be included to credit to their account by faith alone in Christ alone when they believe in my Lord if this is at one end but there are other end as well where the people though they don't have the images yet they say by getting circumcised they have been saved circumcision is not a law for you to be fulfilled if the one who has been there for circumcision he has to keep the entire law but the law has been fulfilled in one thing love you one another as you love another how we can love one another by speaking lies by telling that you are not able to die for your friend do you not know the word teaches for us several times in the gospel of John the good shepherd will lay down his soul for the sheep there is no greater love than this in John 15 13 that a friend lays down his soul or his life for the for, for other friends so where is the friend's life that are going to honor Though you circumcise and you're not even worried, your fellow man has been perishing. And where is the love? The problem with us is, dear brethren, those who don't have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church to be called as pastor teachers, not able to understand the real importance of the original language of the scriptures and train them up. And the problem where they don't even value and respect the Bible which has been written for us in the original languages of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and they have forgot the name of Yahweh Elohim is nothing but the gift of revelation for us. If not where do we stand, if not where we can stand, if not where we can think how we can stand. Instead of that name to be Yahweh Elohim, the gift of revolution to teach them the word of the Lord our God so that they can fulfill a part of their sufferings to the church of Christ as Colossians 1 24 and that church refers to the congregational believers who come there who are being saints who are being made to understand by their lives they are becoming the professors and in return they have to teach to the angels in the heavens and every believer is being called though is an ordinary one to teach to the angels in heaven so that they are rubbing, rubbernecking their necks to look what the pulpits have been teaching every day, every breath. And what do you find? You don't find anything else apart from vain glory on this earth. You find the pastors chasing after the wind, sowing to the wind and reaping war wind. If they would have been sent by the Lord of our God from the head of the department of the church, with this great bona fide gift they would certainly take the pain the pain of a birth pangs for that technia crowd and such a great technia crowd dear brethren whether you believe it or not in respect where apostle paul uses as a master uses them towards his disciples my little children and he tells in the greek technia of me the technia word which has been used over here where the pastor teacher trains them to become disciples for Christ who become the mathetes for Christ when the Roman Catholicism reformation which has been taken out from the Roman Catholics who went along to do their lives to be great what they do that was a final thing what they tell that was a reward for them to give as a sainthood certificate and what they would tell that would be final for them during those times, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, the church was supreme authority. And they wanted to rule in all the terms. The same thing right now in the midst of this 
though the 500 after years of this protestant reformation in our hands now what the pastor says that will be the final and what the committee get along and form the doctrines that will be the final but do they know what the bible teaches the common man could know what was the bible martin luther took a fight he gave us in our hands this infallible and inerrant word by having our translations later than followed by William Carey and then the greater man who came to my country, India, and translated the Bible in our own languages, what we can read today. Though we have the problems of translations and anachronisms, but we have the content, the content, the content. The essence of it. And if the bona fide gifted pastor teacher, if he knows what is his burden, he comes there to teach to you all in the original languages of the scriptures. And dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, if a minister doesn't teach to you from the original language of the scriptures, then do not believe him, throw him out. No matter, he may be a great prophetic realm to teach for you. No matter, he may tell to cure your worries by your miracles or healings and ask you to buy his oil and keep at the point if you're having severe menstrual clots period for you so that it could be healed and she can come and give a testimony concerning that oil. Throw them out. Don't worry about them. These are the nothing but antichrists. Antidoctrinal miracles, antidoctrinal healings and the way how they speak in tongues which they have been seized long back in 1870 and how satan culprits their minds not to understand the truth right from the beginning satan wanted to stop the revolution what we can get in our hands though the popper the popery of the authority came along to stop it but no one can prevail when Lord our God has opened the doors for us that we shall be in this 21st century and we need Bible in our hands and we need to train and we need to train the people who have been there under us in the right terms of right exhortation, right, in the right terms of doctrine and reproof so that we could be trained in the instruction of righteousness in all the paths that you can walk. And why these instructions have been given for us, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, the same thing of Deuteronomy 11, 21, in all the ways of my instructions, so that they can walk in all the ways of mine. What are the ways of our Lord, so that we can walk? Proverbs 8, 20, he treads among the paths of righteousness, and he goes along in the tracks of justice. And the same thing he has made for us in the church age, for us to reveal this mystery doctrine, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, he tells in and Dikaya Sune Kai Hosiatis Tesalithia, he has made us after the mannerism of righteousness and justice together called as holiness of Lord and in the benignity of truth. And what do you have to search as a believer? What that is truth. Now why you have to search? Because when the Spirit of Truth comes, says John 15 26, he shall lead us to be a witness for the truth. What our Lord our God has declared and is declaring unto us right now the completed kind of scripture from the original language of the scriptures by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling us, indwelling in us, so that yet we can proclaim with great exhortation the words of Christ in love. We are not here to curse. We are not here to see that you have been given this gift for condemnation. We are here with given this gift for edification. And we call you to recollect your standards. We call you to recollect your life. What you have to have. You have to have your technia crowd for you. And how many of them are there for you to be called as technia crowd? If you have one or two, that's enough. Not more than that is required. Do you know why? Because not many people will follow the narrow gate. They want the broad road. Not many people will understand that we have been born to be kings in Christ. We have been made, as our Lord says in John 18, 37, to witness for the truth. Not many people will understand these terms. And they do not even know why they have been born. They do not even know why was this reformation movement. They do not even know the value of this infallible and inerrant word of Lord our God, which is their life. And they do not even know the ways of Christ of our Lord of our God walks in righteousness and is justice. Therefore, constantly the angels in Isaiah chapter 6 proclaim the seraphims, including to tell, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One is, Lord my, is my Lord God Almighty, and the heaven and earth is filled up all of His glory. And the heaven is full of thy glory, and the earth also to be filled, says Isaiah chapter 60, verse 13, referring to the plants of pine tree, fir tree, and box tree, and where His feet has been kept. And do you know why the pine tree has been placed when we have gone through Isaiah chapter 41 verses 7 through 17 through 21? The pine tree will rebuild your DNA structure again. 
the pine tree will rebuild for which you have been made in E.I. Khan of Colossians 3.10. Referring back to the pine tree, we have been called to the doctrines of the mind of Christ. The entire New Testament being put together. And the fir tree and the box tree, you can analyze them as our Lord of God give, give us revelation to look upon them. The mystery doctrine of the churches could be compared to that pine tree. Our Lord's prayer, prayer for the church in John chapter 13 through 17 could be compared to that pine tree. And not even a single word of the Bible could be diminished to be thought that this is for the second category, third category. Every word of the Lord has been theonistas. But why I'm telling you all these things? To make you all to understand your spiritual DNA structure to be once again built back. To see that you being the techna and you are being taken care if you have that ministry for Christ. And how many of them have really have the ministry for Christ? So that they can have the material and can get the image of you. Galatians 6, 3 to 6. When you are nothing and you think you are something, you are deceiving yourself. When you think you are doing the greatest work of Yahweh Elohim on this earth and if you are doing the greatest realm of Him on this earth and at the end you end up nothing and you think you have done great work but you have not carried the load of the Lord our God which has been given for you. Do not be mocked. God our Lord is not going to be absolutely taken to see what you have not sowed that you are going to go to get. With Him all the things are in righteousness and His justice. Therefore, every man should prove his work. What is that work every man should prove? The documents of examination. The one who has been kept by the Lord of our God and we have been achieving it. If you are not proving your work, then you shall not rejoice for the labor that you go through. You may rejoice in your money on this earth. You may rejoice by cheating them to tell, I do the oil business, I do the water business, I do the kerchief business, I do the gold business or diamond business I do the loan business of the account number and there are in fact indeed many who do the business with books the sad part how can we trade along do you not know a lot of our God has said that he's going to keep us superior he shall see that we will never be inferior having to learn from the lesson of Elijah when the crow was being sent to give him food haven't you known the way how Elijah was being sent to that widow rather than the any other widows of Zarephath? Haven't you known how our Lord of God has been mindful of you in all the ways that you take? Haven't you known while telling for us the entire glory of Solomon's porch is not equivalent even to the things pertaining to the grass of the field which is going to be in the morning and evening it is going to fade off then how much more I should be mindful of you haven't you known that the very hair of your head has been counted by the Lord of a God if he has counted our very hairs take your entire life to count your hairs and you will not even count them and when we have been so much faithfully secured in our Lord of a God in that enemy territory though the world doesn't love us because we are not of the world and it hates us then to our Christ our Lord is preeminent in all of those things because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world and the one who is in this world Cosmos Diabolicus knows very well that a true believer in Christ has a fortification of a dual realm the first fortification is salvation is secured the second fortification if he's daily growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by the daily gap and following all the instructions of the Lord of our God and obeying them and walking in his paths he knows very well he is destroying Satan's power on this earth and Satan has no power even to touch him and the way what we read in Psalms chapter 21 verses 1 and 2 every, and every word of his lips will be established if we obey his voice and if we abide in him in the Rima declarations of his word every day then we shall produce greater fruit then we shall be his disciples Christ our Lord has his disciples and he said if they have kept my saying even they will keep your saying what a privilege it would be when the servant will become like the master what a privilege it would be when Christ our Lord has said as we are his friends and the friend knows everything but a servant doesn't know Referring back to the Israel again, they do not know about this church age, neither they do know about this mystery doctrine of the church age. And now he has called us to be his friends, then how can we be his traitors? 
by ignoring to understand the value of this Bible doctrine, by ignoring to understand the sacrifice of those great men who laid their lives for us. And we just trample for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley and give us a great testimony for our account in our lives that we are traitors and we are the most wretched men and we cannot be trusted because Lord our God has put trust in us. But Lord, you are wrong to put trust in us because we love the flesh attitudes of this earth. Therefore, we don't teach to you the truth every day. Yet we say we are in truth, yet we say we are in light, but you are deceiving themselves. Constantly go along in grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Where is the document of examination for you, for your work to be proved? Where is your rejoicing at the judgment seat of Christ when you know yourself, when you have been proved, when you have not taken the burden of the Lord from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21 to daily teach, to daily understand and to daily execute this word and you have fa failed to do that? So where is your portion? Where is your work that you can have your rejoicing in Christ? And dear brethren, the greater you fail to communicate the things that have been instructed to you through the word of the Lord our God so that to roar like a lion sound down into the ears of them through proper kathesis by giving them the great instruction and teaching and if you're not able to do that the kathesis to discriminate them clearly and teach them each and every word each and every verse each and every chapter each and every book of the Bible precept upon precept line upon line you are not really living a life of the glory of the Lord on this earth had been called to be as pastors therefore the Lord of the Lord ever says if any man think to be himself something but when he is nothing he deceiveth himself therefore wherever you go where do you find you don't find the disciples Therefore, 2 Peter, in verse chapter, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, he writes a testimony concerning Paul. The letters written by Apostle Paul are hard to be understood. Those who are unlearned, and by that we mean those who are amathetes, who are not the disciples, and those who are not having the stability of their mind to pursue, no matter whatever it is to hang on, to latch on, the word called as Kazakh so that they can develop in them the archaeo strength by the daily Zahar teaching process and shining and consider them to be the Romai to withdraw them from the way how they have to be departing themselves from their minds not to learn the word and the word what we have read in John chapter 15 Hupaga A the two words one to be positive the one to be negative the positive reality teaches for us to understand the truth. Wherewith if they could give their lives to know the word of the Lord of our God and the importance of it. How they could stand for it. And the negative reality says they could depart. Therefore the word hupaga a it tells for us may be under leading. The first positive realm to be led under, to bring under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or the negative realm to withdraw oneself and to go away, to depart from the daily gap. It purely depends upon you how you go. So that if you are not being led by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then you can never get greater fruit or neither you can get the greater fruit. Wherewith? It is a burden for us to carry and to daily take in the gap of the word of the Lord. Therefore, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, teaches to us the importance of the daily gap. And what a life it would be for a pastor teacher not to recognize the great sacrifice of those men who have given us the Bible in our hands. If that was a mediating link for us to the Protestant movement, then how about the first century sacrifices of those martyrdoms like Apostle Paul where Christ our Lord chose them only for martyrdom they fought a long time but their light their words did not come to light for us till the popery was there under the Roman Catholics 
They wanted the supremacy to be ruled. They did not understand the equal privilege and equal opportunity given to every believer in Christ. They wanted what the church said was final. Today as such the same things are happening in the Protestant realm. No difference between them and us. Because the people, though they have Bible in their own hands and it has been plentifully printed even by the Gideon where they come and give for you free of cost. Yet they fail to realize the importance of this Bible. And what they do, enjoy, go weekly once to the church, sit there, what the pastor tells you, listen about good deeds. In fact, even when we compare to the unbelievers' morality in my country, India, these believers are not even worthy to be counted. They represent Christ in the time of Christmas season as drunkards. Unbelievers recognize Christ, oh, your festival where the people drink and die on the roads by getting into accidents. And they tell it's a festival. If a God, our Lord, has been born for us on that day, that's the festival of dedication and the festival of light. Not a festival to harm yourself and to leave behind to this world a blasphemy. Do you think, though you may not drink and though you may not drive, but if you are not witnessing the truth to these unbelievers, yet you are equivalent to them. They defile themselves in the flesh realm, but you are defiling yourself being silent. Not able to show for them the light of all the word of the Lord of God and the gospel of him. And that doesn't mean that you go house to house and teach all of these things. But your counsel, but your realm of daily taking in the word. And being mature enough in the presence of the Lord of God to lead you to talk. Not to be napias, not to open your mouth. In the terms of even hieros being the outward porch and outward appearance of the buildings. But you are called to be the one to be mature enough, the telelios in Christ, the manhood in Christ, and to be the inner one now on temple of the Lord, the inner sanctuary. And you have been told whenever you open your mouth, speak those things which are true, those things which are pure, those things which are justifiable, those things which are virtue. And in other terms, Colossians 4, 6, it teaches for us, your words are nothing but the logi to this earth. And such are the great believers where Christ our Lord has designed for this church age to enter. But what it is the world is doing today, what it is about the Christianity today, once again, we need to stand up and nail the entire Bible upon the cross of the church. If at all it has been there, in fact, even the jams and the doors. And if you can ask me, nail it to the head of the so-called kleptes, lestes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, and show us oriented-minded pastors the entire Bible by taking a long anvil and a hammer and hitting it straight into his forehead. The Romans at least nailed our Lord to the hands and legs. For we need to stand in this today's Christendom to nail, I am talking about figuratively, taking a great anvil of six or eight inches because the skull will remain for six or eight inches. Take back the Bible in the original languages. Keep in front of his forehead, like the way how the Jews have been told to tie like a proselyte to their hands and on the bits of their frontlets, of their eyelids. Keep there the Bible and nail it from his forehead till to the last one. And we know figuratively how it could be if we do that. And if we could do that really, we know he's going to be dead. The same thing should happen to the pastor teacher. He should die to the world. He should get out his hearts from the world. He is dead to the world but alive to Christ. The Tanville and the Bible which has been placed constantly in the front lids of his eyes should certainly train him up to understand it is no longer the world that you look, it is the Bible that looks in you and your transformation of your thinking absolutely the word for metamorphomai where Apostle Paul uses him in Romans 12, 2 and Galatians 4, 19 so that I can get the material and I can produce the image in the artistic sense. And do you think he stops there? 
He further teaches for us the only once in the entire Bible, if this word has been entered, we should be very careful about this morpheme or morphothete. It calls for us where the Christians have been described as a little child who needs to mature. And we have been called for the daily renovation of our thinking, not to be nepios, but to be mature in Christ. And that anvil and the Bible which has been placed in his brain, he can understand. Now it has to be changing towards the mind of Christ every day, every breath. Do you not know? Greater than honey, greater than money, greater than gold and silver, the word of the Lord our God should be taken and it should be tested. If it is a honey, the second step is pure honey. If it is a gold, the second step is refined gold. If it is in the first translation of your English, then the refined gold or pure honey resembles in the original languages of the scriptures. If you kneel down and write in the uninspired word, then you have to go to kneel down and write once again in the interlinear scriptures of the original languages of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Now you are learning both the inspired and uninspired word together and you can understand the difference and the importance of that word. And as a king, you represent the third time, you write in the original languages and you learn the importance of each and every word. Morphote refers only once, used in Galatians 4.19 in the entire Bible. And it calls for us in the sense wherewith now you are being trained as a child that you have to go now to become mature in Christ. And Apostle Paul refers to them who are the techna of him. And he's taking the birth pangs like a woman who is in her birth pains. Till Christ could be formed in you. Christ could be formed in you. The morphe, morphe, morphe. And it tells for us in the terms of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Metamorphomai, your renovation of your thinking. And if you can take that literally and you can nail it. And you know you are going to be dead. Like that I mean the pastor should be dead to this world. The bona fide gifted pastor teacher who is a male believer alone and is not a female. Female believers have not been given this bona fide gift. In the arena and the sphere of them to serve to there, it has been there for them to the Sunday school, to the pertaining things of that classes where they can go along to the woman, but not to have to have authority over the man. Bible says no, it is no. Your reasons, your speculations, your historical evidences, your works and your XYZ reasons. We can term you as antichrists. What the Bible says, but you're walking instead of the Bible, what the Bible should be ruling in your pulpits. No matter how many people will believe and get transformed, no matter how many people have been there for you, but remember, a wrong thing cannot make a right thing and both of them will end up in wrong things. But a right thing in the presence of the Lord in a right way leads to the right path. Though you may say 99% I am pure Lord, but 1% I have in me as a mistake because I have been, though I have not been oriented to give the uh, bona fide gift from that other department of the church, yet I am a woman and I came along to have authority over the men, then it's gone. Our Lord of God did not spare Moses, who did not circumcise his second son. Our Lord our God did not spare Paul when he wanted to go in other terms rather than coming and being teaching these mystery epistles for us and writing and being kept preserved for us. How much more you and I we think? If he wants, he leads us and makes us to be better preachers even through the creation of this earth. The nature he used, the rooster he used, the burning bush he used, Tonky to be better preachers than to change them. He even exemplifies the way how this woman can go and tell that she's really having authority to preach over the men. When Naaman was being sent in his physical leprosy, working damnation of eternal one in him and the physical destruction of this earth, he approached to the king, the wrong one, was not the Savior, but a man who has been there, Elijah, who has been called as God is our Savior. 
and he wanted to approach that man in the terms of gold and silver. Salvation is free. Even the teaching of the word of the Lord of our God is free. Who can hinder it? Who can beg money over it? Apostle Paul tells, parents will give to the children, children won't give to the parents. For the needs of your survival on this earth, like the way how you can milk from your own cow and you can eat, from the own field you can take. How much? That which is needed for you to survive, that's it. What else you require to communicate to the Lord than the completed biblical information in your table, in your library? Rather than getting and spending lots of money upon the iPhones or iPads and thinking that I can use this instead of the Bible, it's good, you can do that. But that phone leads to you in other realm. Your WhatsApp, your social media, your knuckle-headed oriented thoughts, being morons, morologia, matalogia, homologia, and diverts you from the true issue known as Bible. In fact, even indeed it drivers it, it diverts you in the present church age, not even to kneel in his presence and pray for a while and meditate upon his word. Far less they can kneel and write the word of the Lord our God and be a witnesses for his truth. Constantly, while Lord of our God comes, grace before judgment. So that when we read in Eskel chapter 24, verse 10, I have given them much wood, put on much wood. The wood refers so that it could be lightening them the fire. The wood is daily declaration of this word of the Lord of our God. Grace. So that when the fire kindles, when they don't change, certainly it burns them out. The much wood refers to the daily teaching, the grace of our Lord. The fire represents the Lord's word upon our tongue. Yet these people don't change. They don't understand what it is, the wood and the fire. It goes them according to the corrosion that removes the scum from their life, yet they don't change. Such is the attitude of these believers today. Though we teach how long for them every day, every day, every day. To ask you to taste the pure honey, to ask you to taste the refined gold, to ask you to take the right word. To ask the word from the original language of the scriptures in spite of all of these things. Yet what do you do? You want to spend time the money that has been needed for you and for your expenditure and if you have your children for them and their for college expenditure the church will bear righteously you need to take not grudgingly murmuring having an indifferent attitude towards the congregation and trying to take wool milk and meat from them and not making them to be satiated as a living sacrifice unto Christ so that they can become the Jehovah's sword on this earth and some ministers work only to tell how much salary you're going to pay to me. Some ministers make up their organizations to tell like the other governmental realm where after their retirement they should get the things pertaining to the pension schemes. Do you not know the vicarious sufferings of Christ? Did he have any security? He came for the work, he did his work. We are coming over here from the head of the department of the church to do his work, to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. We haven't even known from where our second wind will come. We haven't even known if there is any such kind of a things pertaining to the requirements of the family. But we come in the name of the Lord our God. He's our provider. He's our shelter. He's going to give with the righteous hands of those to whom he has given the gift of helps to provide. And apart from this, what you require, the greatest pleasure for a pastor teacher would be to daily teach. Though it works death in him, life in you. Though the outward man perishes, inward man should be renewed day by day. That's the greatest pleasure for a right bona fide gifted pastor teacher. He has to take his portion. He has to daily lead you in the word of the Lord our God. 
and each and every word has such a meaningful for us where Christ our Lord says in Luke 10 21 through 24 these things were been hidden from wise and prophets these things were been hidden from them but Lord our God the Father in heaven he has seen fit to reveal them to these babes and we are babes in Christ indeed and Apostle Paul tells we are the chiefest sinners and among all the chiefest sinners I am the chiefest because only it is His grace. When we are weak, then I am strong, said the Apostle Paul. When we rely upon to be dead by hitting an anvil to our forehead by keeping Bible in front of our eyelids, that means you have been absolutely weak. Do you know how you can become weak? You don't rely upon your rationalism, empiricism of faith of this world who have walked earlier to tell if you don't look upon such and such things you're going to die if you don't do such and such things you're going to die but we walk by faith and not by sight our Lord is our provider our Lord is our banner our Lord is our shelter our Lord is our light our Lord is the one who leads us in each and every manner for us even to think even to make notes about his thoughts and yet the people come in the terms of Naaman and what do they do they are not weak. They come to be strong. How? They want to make the congregation to be fattened by prophesying them lies, telling peace, 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 where there cannot be peace. Telling them death, where they cannot have to tell openly, but they tell lives. But Lord our God says, we have taken the yoke of wood and thought it could be removed, but I have put upon you the yoke of iron. Remember about these things. You have to be very careful. And yet they don't believe, but they love to believe the Nehemiah, the Shilamite. They love to believe the Hananias. And like the Tabera crowds, they go along to end up in Kibra Tatova. They remember the ginger, garlic, and the fish, rather than remembering the spiritual manna given to them every day. They depart from the places where they have to be, in the line of the word of the Lord of God. They seek and search in terms of their own love rather than the word of the Lord our God. Nothing on this earth is more important for us than the word of the Lord our God. So when the envel goes through your head, your forehead, it kills you off. A pastor teacher is weak. It has to be killed in all the rationalism thoughts and the empiricism thoughts and the viewpoints of what others have chewed out of the food. And he has to go back and take his own food from the original languages of the scriptures and with the net help what we are going to have right now because we cannot go and access to the greatest theological seminaries which is far away from my country, India, like the USA or the Germany, if not the things pertaining to England where they have the theological books and they have to study and they go by even more detail than what we learn every day. And sometimes it pricks my heart. I miss that opportunity. But I come to the greatest theological seminary of KT theology, the knee tongue theology. When your knees are to the presence of the Lord, then your tongues are, then the tongue will be made the pen of the describer. No flesh and blood can teach. The ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in His divine illumination, what it can teach. But the things which pricks my heart, it could be more accurate if it could go back and lick and understand and consider what it is. And by the time in, those who are earlier than us who left their lives to make us to realize in these terms. But I am thankful to the Lord for me to make my KT theology as my only neology to understand His Word. I'm understand. I'm, I'm much thankful for it. I don't require anything else apart from that because I found a greatest man for me to teach and Lord of a God who has been there for me to constantly guide those great men who can train me up as I am today what I am and I will be in the future as well what he requires me to be. But the anvil which I put upon my head long back with the forehead keeping Bible in front of me from the original language of the scriptures has made me to forget and not to open my mouth in the terms of the mind of men, but in the terms of only mind of Christ and the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone. Therefore, this mystery doctrine for us. Therefore, this great burden for us. But in the midst of such great evil apostasy, what we have been there in the terms of heretics and cults, we go through these sufferings for Christ, so that even we fill up antenna plero to fill up in turn 
which signifies with anti that the supply comes from an opposite quarter of the deficiency. What is that opposite quarter of the deficiency? Christ of Allah couldn't have for his vicarious sufferings the time to go through what we go through every day because his work was been there for a short time. He finished his work. But now the church where Apostle Paul tells in Colossians 1.24, I play my part to fulfill that afflictions to Christ for the sake of his body and what are that suffering that we go through. The sufferings which we go through when the people don't watch and consider the cry of the Lord of a God grace before judgment every day kneeling down in his presence. The sufferings when the people say, how can we watch, how can we look, it's too, it's too big and how can we come every day to come to the class? How can we come and understand to become the disciple of the Lord? That's the suffering what we go through. Whenever you're doing the work of the Lord our God, if there is no encouragement of you, certainly feel bad. Such sufferings which they go through. And do you know how is the encouragement? Like the way of Noah was for 120 years, no converts. That's the encouragement we require. But yet our Lord our God makes our mind to be flint like a rock. Whether the here or phobia your work is to teach, go and teach. That's it. That's the mandate and the command what we have. And we do that every day because we are answerable to the Lord our God and not to this man. What else they have in their mind apart from mud? What else they can think apart from the word of the Lord our God because their mind only earthly things. They cannot even come close enough to think what the Bible is completed and in fact even the modesty should tell have they read at least once the Bible far less they can kneel down and write the Bible in their entire life and I question this in a rhetorical manner to the pastors who are so called now with the great pulpit theological seminaries what they have. Have you at least read once? You say yes, but have you written at least once? You may say yes, but have you knelt down and written at least once? There may be men in the great realm who might have done that in the past, but now we have breath in our nostrils, as our Christ our Lord cannot come back once again in the flesh and enter into the Holy of the Holies. He knew long back when the third temple was been constructed, since he is the glory of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant was been removed during the time of Jeremiah and that Nebuchadnezzar realm and the attack upon the temple. And there they replaced it with a storm. He knew very well, so he did not enter into the Ark of the Covenant. He did not enter into the Holy of the Holies. And Lord of our God is not going to come again in the form of flesh because he's resurrected. And there is no need for the resurrection body to enter because he is the glory of the Lord. And you know what does he do now? He indwells in us through the Nyon Temple, the Shekinah glory. He has given us this privilege. And He wants to dwell and settle in us forever. To abide in us forever. And the terms of witnessing the truth. In this Shekinah glory, can we kneel down and write at least once to exercise the kingship by witnessing the truth? By exercising the kingship, by writing them the second time in the interlinear, the third time again in the original languages, can we witness that? The flesh, what we have, for what it is. To fulfill the lustful patterns of your own sin natures, cherishing and nourishing and self-destruction of your own self. The flesh has been given by our Lord for His glory, for His work, for His purpose. Therefore, 1 Corinthians 6.19 quotes, Glorify the Lord our God in your spirit, in your body. The spirit has not been there of the original spirit, but the inner spirit, which is the activated one, which is the created one. So, I fill up on my part the afflictions of Christ. Here, the afflictions of Christ do not refer to his expiatory sufferings on the cross because of his vicarious death of a substitutional spiritual one. But his sufferings endured in his humiliation prior to that event, suffering for righteous sake, suffering for righteousness sake, sufferings incurred through 
exhausting service exhausting service the life what the reformation fathers have done for us exhaustive service william tyndale william kelly william kelly the exhaustive service translating the bible into our hands the exhaustive service of martin luther to nail the 95 theses today we need to pay back our exhaustive service by nailing to the head of every pastor teacher the original languages through the anvil the original languages of hebrew greek and aramaic which has to be taught in the pulpits and if they don't do that we should be the voice to start and they should be dead to the world and they should be alive to christ no longer to live for the life of unrighteousness being servants of sin but living a true life in christ being servants of righteousness in christ such exhausting service and whenever the people don't know and don't take time to understand about these things the sufferings due to the opposition of sinners the heart sufferings which we go through the opposition of the pastor teachers the opposition of the committee the opposition of the church members not to come and listen the word of the lord of god refer to such sufferings to fulfill the afflictions of christ and furthermore sufferings which we take in the result of persecution and for two reasons in persecution number one the atonement was a finished work and the second reason the word for sufferings here which has been called as thlipsis is never used for vicarious sufferings of lord and christ so the sufferings for which they have been persecuted it is not for the atonement but the sufferings to teach and to witness the truth and to evangelize the world with proper teaching because colossians 123 teaches to us the ketesis the creation which has been there in the heaven as well as on this earth our lord our god has spread the gospel already and he has sent for us like the way how elijah was been sent in the time of evil Jezebel. He has sent us in this earth right now to teach us his word, to teach the people to become so that we could be the light and soul and make these people to understand what it is to be the light and soul for Christ. And such a great process which is our life in this church age as a great guarantee for him. yet he sends for us as a result of persecution though the people may come he teaches to us what it is the atonement has been finished the vicarious offerings of christ of all has been finished but yet what you go now you go to be the voice but there are people only who can go to such teachings who have anviled with a hammer upon their forehead the original languages of the scriptures in the protestant 500 years of reformation they can produce the right fruits much fruit and they can be called the disciples of christ and the lord of our lord's hand is not short in providing for you those men who can in return train you up to become the missionaries for christ if at all there is something that has been lacking purely your negligence to know the truth and nothing else than that the modest you should tell you are not ready to cleave and cling and the back with Christ our lord in all of his instructions and in all of his ways the greater you reject the greater will be the great grace of our lord for you to hear before judgment could come and tear you apart from peace to peace and make you to realize what sin you have done because the piling of the fire for our lord by taking you more wood he knows the more wood is nothing but the greater doctrine we teach every day and yet you reject so this suffering incurred during his earthly ministry were necessarily cut tail by reason of his limited life on earth and needed to be continued in his servants 
the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church to male believers. If the work of preaching the word was to be carried on, only the one who preached the word of the Lord our God, the bona fide duty of the pastor teachers. So this earthly ministry wherewith we continue in the being the servants of Yahweh Elohim in the preaching work of the word of our Lord our God, we are carrying his afflictions in us for the sake of the church, fulfilling them to make every believer perfect and complete. That's what we read the remaining verses in Colossians 1, 24-29. The context of the subject teaches there, the sufferings which you go through is to see that every believer has been made perfect and complete. That's it. No compromise. Teaching, teaching, teaching the word of the Lord. The right duty of the pastor teacher, Paiman Didaskalas, is to teach. And the one who has to be a shepherd, he has to be a teaching shepherd. And if he doesn't know what is the work to be a teaching shepherd, he is no minister to you all. Holding forth with the right with the wrong translations, holding forth with your called as sheer rocks of their minds. Christ our Lord was been curtailed about the suffering so that now we by the teaching of the word of the Lord can continue that sufferings for the sake of the body of Christ. And we being his loyal servants, we being his daulas, we being his dasmias, because we enter there with the Yusabian principle. Though our Lord our God has called us to be friends, we are not to be traitors, but rather we be called as the friends of a daulas one. A faithful friend wherewith Moses was been told in the Bible, like him no one rose again. He is faithful in all of my house. I speak to others in visions and dreams, but I speak to him face to face. What a privilege it would be to call that we continue with sufferings by daily teaching the word of the Lord of our God. And daily every breath of our life is a meaningful purpose. Every work of Christ on this earth is a meaningful purpose. And we have been placed to glorify him to the maximum. Moving from glory to glory for a meaningful purpose. Every work, every facet, every thought, everyone who comes in your life and he goes out of your life is a purpose of the Lord. Because Christ our Lord speaks to us face to face through his word from the original exegeomai process of the original languages of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And like Zacchaeus, we come along to explain that to you, in spite of you people, understand and love and take it or not. We go through that hard sufferings by the opposition of the sinners as well, who don't love to take the word. The sufferings which we come along with through the exhaustive service, yet we come every day to teach the word. Because it is he who is going to drive us, it is his power who is going to work in us, to make every believer perfect and complete. And for whom our Lord our God has recorded and kept these things, it will be useful for them if the rapture has been delayed. But yet we wait faithfully, as in this generation, that we have carried the guidance of the Lord our God. Though being alive exactly for 500 years' term, in the Reformation movement of this October 31st, if Martin Luther could nail 95 theses, by our terms, it could be to nail the anvil a big six or eight inches and with a completed canon of scripture in the original languages of the word and nail it not to the Protestant church but to the pastor who is standing there in his head. We need to get such great re reformation for Christ because his word has to be honored above his name. But the people don't even worry about his word. Such great re-reformation by nailing anvil upon the foreheads of the so-called pastors from the original language of the scriptures should be our life. So the preaching of the word of the Lord of God to be carried on. Thus all saints down the ages are partakers of the sufferings. What a privilege it would be for them. The great men who came from Martin Luther, in fact, even till the time of Robert Bunker Thieme, or in fact even more who are right alive with the contemporary period. Down the ages are partakers of the sufferings when they are faithful to the obligation they have of preaching the word of God in the ice concept with the dispensing technique of dispensations under the intense hermeneutical principle. They have that obligation of preaching the word of the Lord of God every day. They have the obligation for us 
and they need to understand what it is. The obligation what we have to others to daily teach, because much is given for us and much is expected from us. And if we don't grow up to teach in those terms, our life is a failure. Dear brethren, remember the one simple word used only once in Galatians 4.19, Morphete. Till training required for you all to change from child to become a mature one in Christ. And those who are being the disciples of the right word of the Lord our God will certainly enjoy this message. And those disciples of me, said the Apostle Paul, till Christ could be formed in them, I have taken the pains. And how many pastor teachers are taking today such pains rather than having divisions and strifes to the congregation and through their members of the committee? What pains they take? The pains they tell to the church, to that committee where they survive, with a great hatred what they have. And such are the men who have been having in their minds to tell. The committee can't understand. If they throw me out from this church where I have to go, what about my children? What about my family? And the committee can't understand. Are they eating the shit? Are the excreta of the one with whom I have my paramour relations? These are the literal words set by one of the so-called pastor who is a kleptes, lustes, misthotes, tupas, and cunning, one, cunning man. This man tells, does not the committee know? Does he heat? rather than food, the human excreta, and that too, the human excreta of the one with whom I have my paramour relationships, or to be called in the biblical language concubine, rather than having legal life as Abraham had with Hagar. If this is the fate of the pastor teacher, why can he have the birth pangs? To see the metamorphite, of Christ being formed in them. If he has been sent by the Lord of a God with love, he is going to come all the things of the disputings in the church by daily teaching the word. And he doesn't even open his mouth until the Lord of a God tells him to open his mouth and preach the word. Because he has been there in the work of the Lord to see that every word should not go ergas, worthless. But every word is accountable in the presence of the Lord for what and why we spoke those words. So, dear brethren, that was an example, an anecdote, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. But remember, the re-reformation, nailing upon the forehead of the pastor teacher with the 18th anvil to teach them the entire Bible from the original languages of the scriptures will be our life as reformation in this church age. How many will be with us, we do not know. How many have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, they alone will stand. It's enough for our Lord to have the 300 men to fight his battle rather than keeping 30,000 men. It's enough for our Lord to use those slingshots with five stones because battle belongs to the Lord. It is enough for us, our Lord, to use that ox goad and shamgar case to kill 600 men. And it's enough for us, for our Lord, to use this Reba declaration of the mind of Christ in the completed canon scripture of the Logos to overcome the things that have been there in this earth with a great manner to tell if Saul could kill thousand, David killed ten thousand. If the Israelites could kill thousand, the Old Testament saints, the church age is able to kill ten thousand. So which way you go, dear brother, on as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that to believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, that is the one who is self, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. 
and for the past teacher the greatest mother is to care so thon lagan herald the word in season out of season because the dharma from my witnesses where we have been called the number one dharma from my witnesses in willing trinity for the bible in our hands and number two dharma from my witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brethren do not worry besides nature the entire angel coast will be our witnesses but our work is to rightly divide the word of the lord of our god no matter however the chips may fall battle belongs to all lord of our god the reason for us being kept alive separated before the foundation of the world for his glory belongs to our lord what do we have only here on this earth his grace for us to walk in his path provided our evolution is positive in all the ways to observe to walk as the word says in Deuteronomy 11:20 1 and 22 if you observe to observe all the ways to observe the days of heaven upon the earth to observe the glory of lord our god before the foundation of this world which has been given to him through his mystery doctrine if you would observe that and if you can observe your practical life on this earth the daily gap of the process then lord our god will lead you triumphant in each and every way that you go or to the praise of his glory speaking face to face through the original languages of the scriptures to you every day you know what your standards of your thinking learn christ and don't give place to the devil so ponder over these things dear brethren as we shall come back and continue tomorrow Father, what a great privilege it is for us to enjoy and have a great relationship with Thy Word through the divine illumination which You have given to us. The reformation moment, O Lord, which we have to make up, strengthen us to know and to talk according to Thy terms, according to Thy Word. Father, what else can we think, O Lord, when the anvil has been crossed through our front parts of the brain? The man will be certainly dead. Likewise, the flesh of this man. should be dead to the world and be alive to Christ so that every believer could know the burden to be called to teach the original language of the scriptures in the pulpits with proper isagogic categories and exegeomai process of exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations father thy will thy plan we are thy servants lead us according to thy will alone not our will In Christ my chosen spirit of gracious name we pray father may Lord God the whole spirit enlighten us in this tape Amen